Hey guys, welcome back to Pass Money. My name is Alex Kirby. Is uh, he's here, but he's not on camera. He's having uh, internet issues. And then we have two guests, Stan and Lynn, uh, from Unshackled Couple. We'll leave uh, their their YouTube channel down below in the description. But uh, guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, how are you guys doing today? We're good. I just woke up. But... <laughs> just woke up. Okay. <laughs> All right, nice. Kirby's got a, a first set of uh, questions that he wants to ask. Kirby, are you still, are you still here? Or are you having? Uh... Yeah, I'm. I'm still here. Hopefully, okay. y'all can hear me. I'm, again, yeah. I put. We have Kirby back on uh, with the phone call. Okay. All right, we can hear you, Kirby. So again, like I said, I'm a fan of your channel, and then I have a question about a couple videos that you put. You posted. Not that I have any questions. I just want you to elaborate on it further from uh, what I've heard and just to pass the message on to people from our channel. So, the first video, now you got to scan your brains back for when you made this video, but five tips before marriage. The one I love, and I love all of them, first off, you know, the finance, the, you know, family boundaries, kids, religion, but the one I want to talk about is complaints. You brought up a, a great subject there when it comes to complaints keep everything in house and i love i love that tip because again everybody you know everybody has their own view of marriage if you have a complaint about your spouse then uh and you're going outside sources trying to get input they're going to give you their view on marriage so if you have an issue you want to deal with it in-house and not you know outsource it to friends family members and things like that because they're going to give you their opinion but I, of course, I'm just paraphrasing what you said. So, can you elaborate more on that? Stanley, either one. Could you repeat the question? If you, if you mentioned um, your your point on complaints, like keeping any complaints right. within the marriage and outsourcing it, basically telling other people. Mm -hmm. So, elaborate more on that. Yeah. Okay. So, with that, I don't mean, and when we say like keep it within the marriage. We don't mean keep it like fully, fully within the marriage because there are going to be times as a couple that you won't be able to figure out on your own and that you're going to need help. But what we mean by keep it inside is keep it inside when it comes to family and friends and other parties that are possibly biased. And then when you guys are in like a state where you're not fighting, your marriage is in a good place, you um, basically we're just saying have an appointed third party that if you do have trouble, this is the agreement. This is who we're going to. Um, for Stan and I, it's a couple from church. Um, they didn't know me first. They didn't know him first. They met us at the same time. Um, or that could be like an agreement of, oh, we're going to go to this marriage counseling practice if we're just reaching a, like a dead end. Uh, keeping it in, elaborating a little more. If I go to my friend and I'm complaining about marriage because I need someone to talk to about it, that's just gonna create biases. So my friend is going to hear what I'm saying and she's gonna, she or he is automatically gonna be on my side. My family, anyone who has known me first and has met me first will automatically be on my side. And then the next time they meet, they're gonna see Stan in a different way. They probably won't like say it to his face, but they're just going to see him in, in their head. It's going to be rolling um, as, oh, Lynn told us so-and-so about Stan. And that's just like something that we have seen um, through other relatives. And it's just, we don't want to walk into a room where it's like uncomfortable that people know this about us. And it doesn't even mean like disrespect Stan. It's disrespecting us as a couple. It's putting our name down as a couple. So, I love it. I love it. And again, sorry everybody for the technical difficulties I'm having on my side, but um, I love everything that you said. And again, and it's funny, and and the reason why I'm a fan of your channel is because just like you, I'm in a interracial relationship. Also, my wife's Albanian. I'm American from Detroit, nice. from uh, the hood of Detroit. Matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I I love to hear I love to hear the different perspectives and. It's always good to hear, you know, people going through the same things that, you know, I went through and things like that. We've been married for 16 years. And if I say the wrong uh, year, Alex, please edit that out so my wife will kill me. Um, but going to, the, going to the next question I have, again, so again, this is another video you guys did. Five things to do with your money when income increases. 
And then, of course, I've heard all of them. But the question I have for you guys is the step number four, invest extra money. What do you guys do as a couple to invest the money when you start increasing your income? Uh, I know one is a traveling nurse, and and I know also know one is smarter than the other one. That was a great video. Um, but so, what do you do as a couple to invest? To invest, where do you put your money and allocate it? So, so with our money, first thing is like we don't. The more money we make, we don't increase our expenses. So that way we Correct. can invest more. Uh, and the more we make, suppose you make extra 100, 200 or 1,000 a, a week this week. We are already, we have, we, have, we have stuff ready that we can put the money into. We just have to hit a button send. Correct. So we have set ourselves up in a way that if we make extra money, we have places to put it. So it's not like, oh, what do we do right now? Let's put it in a savings account. Maybe, no, we know where the money has to go. And for investments, it may be it can be a property you're buying. It can be uh, for it, it can be the stock market. It can be gold, which we invest in, or it can be something for a rental property, or it can just be a savings which we are replenishing. Which yeah. Can I add to that? Also, like if we have extra money, so like we we um using and we've talked about this in some of our videos, but and we kind of have a plan as to how we're going to leverage, when we're going to pay it off, and when um, we're going to make our next big move. So if we have extra money, in a way, we just put it into the plans that we have already had, and then we're ahead of plan, we're ahead of time. Okay, makes perfect, makes, makes perfect sense, makes perfect sense. Uh, again, I'm apologizing for my technical issues over here on this side. No worries. So, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, I just wonder if you had more questions, or did you want me to uh, start asking? Oh no, no, I, I still have more. Like I said, I've been powering the web and I've been listening to the videos for a minute. So I got a couple more questions. I'm sorry. Oh no. Go for um. It. So yeah. So going back to what you said, investing extra money, and and that's what on top of this class here we have an investment class uh, on. Uh, Saturdays that we usually do, and again, I'm here at the airport on Saturday, so I had to do an impromptu video before this uh, call we had here for the class, but that's something that we always talk about. Just because you get extra, that don't mean you have to, you know, live up to your income, or if you get a job promotion, if you're comfortable where you're at, just because you have a new title, that don't mean you have to increase your lifestyle to meet that title. It's okay to stay where you're at, increase the income, and then bring more money in the household to set yourself up for future growth in the future. So I like that part. But another another video I've seen you have, you had um, how to make passive income. So out of the five topics you had, and I'll go through them real quick, real estate, dividend stocks, you know, writing a book, taking a course, you know, YouTube, out of those five, which one is the best one or the one that you like the most to do? You like the most? um i think real estate right real estate well was real estate one of our points we made so many videos with tips but uh that time yeah we, we can have the second was real house. estate yeah if, so by that video yes. we had the second house our by far favorite is real estate because um it's like a project that first off like we're working on together and it's kind of fun to see it go from point a to point b so so far, the houses that we have, um, they've required a little bit of work and it's kind of cool to see the progress. And then when we do have renters or we get our first um, paychecks from that particular um, investment property, it's pretty um, cool. Like I remember the very, very first payment, Sin and I just looked at each other and it was just like this massive feeling of accomplishment. And I'm not saying that the other ones we don't like, I'm just saying, um, the real estate has taken off first for us, and I am sure we're going to experience that feeling once our YouTube channel takes off or once one of our online courses take off as well. Like we're going to have that feeling of, whoa, like we worked so hard and whoa, it's starting to pay off. So it's just like such a cool feeling. Right. I agree with you. I like I like real estate a lot. And I always uh, tell my wife uh, every first of the month is my birthday because somebody's <laughs> sending me money. <laughs> it's uh it's perfect. I love it. Yeah, real estate is one of the ones that 
you, you instantly you see the cash flow coming in or you see the money coming in. Of course, starting out the first property, you you know you might have to allocate more, but once you start doing it and uh, making a repetition of the property two, property three, property four, they get better and better as far as cash flow. You know the mistakes you made in the first one, and then you go on to the next one. And then so the last one I'm gonna ask because I know everybody's tired of hearing the background noise and stuff like that. I know Alex has a lot of great questions to ask. Um, you had a video about self-motivation. And the question I have for you, and so this is a question that I always give, and then, of course, I always give the generic answer because, you know, I'm, I always look into myself to motivate myself. Um, so what would be the answer if you had this question? So I'm going to ask the question. All right. When you tell people to look for motivation, look for people that want to do better things in life. So you want to surround yourself by like-minded people. If you're trying to go somewhere, you want people that's trying to go somewhere. You don't want to, you don't want to uh, surround yourself around people that's trying to do nothing when you're trying to advance. So if somebody comes to you and say, well, I want to progress in life, but I don't know anybody that will motivate me, or if I don't know anybody that's like-minded or trying to go somewhere, what would your advice be? Um, I would say start within your friend circle at work and your immediate friends and to evaluate who would be the best option to go and talk to. And he, he may not be your age. He might not be, he might be an older person, you know, who's in their fifties because they're mature because people tend to think, Oh, I'm 21. I need to hang out with other 21 year olds to be cool or to succeed. But that's not true. You need to figure out who's more mature and who has seen life more than you or who has something more than you. You cannot be hanging out with your level people. Like um, it, it, that's where I would say to start off. Maybe it's at church, your mentor, the elders at church. It might be uh, at school, a professor just asking and saying, you know, I need, I need some guidance. And eventually, if you have that mind that you want to be motivated, you're going to attract those people. Mm -hmm. Like if you are a drinker, like if you like beer, if you like football, you will watch the Super Bowl with some people who like football. Like you will find them, <laughs> like your family, your coworkers, somewhere, some people, you know, you will find them. So if you have that mind, like I want to be around people who are, you know, thriving and succeeding, you will find them. You just have to give it some time, get first connection, second no. So a little bit of an analogy, Stan, tell them what you told me at the gym today. Um, it's, it's not when it comes like finances or motivation. Well, I guess it is motivation, it but is, like, tell, yeah. tell them that analogy you told me at the gym. So real quick. On you the, could insult me. It's okay. No, it's not. It's just, <laughs> I just figured it out. Wait, I'm just realizing that I cannot lift more or I'm not so motivated to lift when I work out with my wife, <laughs> even though we work out pretty intense. Like we do more than the average. We do intense cardio. We do heavy lifting. But when I work out with one of my friends, who is uh, one of my close friends who is really buff and big and he benches like three, four plates and I'm like 10% of his size. I literally looked at Lynn and said, Lynn, I'm not motivated to work out with you. I don't know why. I, I, I'm lazy. I'm like, I'm done. Let's go home. And I'm just realizing, wait, you're motivated more than me, but she has not worked out with anybody more than, you know, I, I pushed, I push more and I make her push. So when I don't work out with someone who's stronger than me, like, hundred times stronger than me. I feel it. I'm telling you, I told her you're not, a, you're not the wrong person. It's just, I look at you and I'm like, okay, let's go. hundred pounds, 75. But I, when I'm working on my friend, I'm benching like almost two plates and he's there to spot me and say, push, push. And I'm like, I want to go more. And I feel more buff, yep. but I told him it's not something wrong. It's just that I just realized the concept that if you hang out with people, Lower better than you. <laughs> or better than you, you're going to push. You will become your personality is going to be a different person when you hang out with more people who are stronger than you. Uh, he may be stronger, but I'm still smarter. The thing so. is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get smarter because I'm with her. She tells me, um, don't be dumb. <laughs> the grammar is wrong. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I spelled the wrong word. Or <laughs> That's right. I love it. I love it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm still going to listen to the call. Alex, go ahead with your questions, and I might chime in with some other questions. But again, I apologize for the questions. Okay. Yeah, I mean, before I get into my questions, I just want to say, like, to your points that you were making, um, 
I can see that for myself when I started to kind of take my own first steps in my financial journey. Like I hung around pretty much everyone that was older than me, um, kind of drifted away from my like high school friends. And um, pe- the first person at work um, was my manager. And uh, he, you know, he wasn't like a multimillionaire or anything, but he, you know, talking to him, he was open about his, his retirement savings, his personal savings, um, trying to pay off his house early. He only had a couple of years left, like, you know, just kind of learning like, okay, there's a different way to do things financially than from what I had seen growing up. Um, and then I had met another friend at work who eventually introduced me to Curvy. And uh, yeah, most of my friends or mentors or whatever are just, they're all older than me. And it's, it's very true. You have to meet people that are more mature. Um, and uh, they, they'll definitely give you guidance and show you the mistakes or teach you about the mistakes that they made so you can avoid them before, you know, you, you can't really learn that from someone your age because they haven't experienced just as much as, the, as an older person has. Right. And, um, but the first question I have is what made you both get started on your financial journeys? And if it was something that you decided together or was it separately and then you came together? Uh, so as our son is making noise in the background, we oh, okay. wanted Oh, I, I, I can't even hear. We can't. I, I can't really hear it. So it's okay. Uh, no. So no, actually, literally, well, I, we hear him. And but like, he's probably the reason that we wanted okay. to take off our financial journey. First and foremost, before we were right when we got married, before we had thought about having kids, it was just like the amount of debt we were in. We were just living paycheck to paycheck. Okay. Um, we started travel nursing. We got out of debt. And then we were just kind of like enjoying and cruising. It was really like this be something bigger concept happened. Do something better. Um, that's kind of extraordinary. Don't just be ordinary. Have a nice house. Be financially stable. No, like extraordinary. That came after the birth of our first son. Yeah. I would say that's when I started the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. That's when we bought our first house. And we were like, okay, we, we just got some, you know, energy and motivation on, you know what? We, we need to teach this. We need to show or prove, like, show an example to our son. And we both came from low beginnings, like, very low income wise, uh, social, society wise. So we were like, we need to push. So I think that triggered our motivation to push real hard, our son. Yep. But, yeah. Is there any, um, like, any figures online, like Dave Ramsey or anyone that yeah. you say? Yeah. You guys. So yeah, we used- oh, she hated Dave Ramsey. She hated him. <laughs> I hated I, him I, I used to listen to our audio and I drive and she's like, can you just stop for one time, Dave oh, Ramsey? Wait, I didn't like- hate <laughs> Ramsey. It just, we were in so much debt. His, uh, the okay. way he talks made me so uncomfortable. He says like, oh, we're in all this debt. I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to hear it. Like I was the person who I'd have piles of mail and I wouldn't even look at it because I knew it was like she, she she's a person who <laughs> piles up mail and ignores it thinking it's not going to come up <laughs> and once he got married I started ripping all our mail open and I opened her mail she's like why are you opening all these bills I said I want to see how much we owe like, you know, I don't want to think about it right now I'm stressed oh. out I don't want to worry I said you're going to make this worse so Dave Ramsey is like ripping everything like op- exposing you on your finances right He's telling you. So I constantly made her listen to it. Yep. And I said, Lynn, this guy is telling something which we can you know, benefit from. So Dave Ramsey did initiate our journey. Literally, we used the five baby steps, you know, the, the snowball method. Right. And we paid only, we worked on cash. We had cash envelopes. Mm-hmm. We paid the smallest credit card. We had like close to 16,000 in debt, 18,000 18, credit card. And we paid that in like nine months. And we with used, just one income, basically. with one income, she was in school. I was working as a staff, staff just a new nurse, so I was not making significant. We were both helping our families. Yeah, we were helping our families and COVID. rent. We, we lived in our own place, so I didn't make that much. People are like, "Oh, you're a nurse." I said, "No, dude. I, I was doing so many other things where it's not my nurse money, but we paid it off. It's right. just the Dave Ramsey method, the right. five baby steps. Mm-hmm. It's uh." Is it the five or six, maybe seven? Seven. seven, seven. seven we used only five, seven. though. <laughs> <laughs> then we started our own route, which I... I yeah. My like, advice, too, with that is not one person's way is going to be the right way. I mean, there's other people we've listened to on YouTube, and I'm terrible with names. Alex... Uh, Hormozy? Her, yeah. The, the guy with the beard? Oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so he actually talks about, like, 
to an extent leverage, which Dave Ramsey would be like, no, don't leverage zero. And I think right. combination with Dave Ramsey's snowball method, I mean, with, and using leverage to your biggest benefit is um, pretty much kind of what we're doing because it's like, we'll leverage, we have big shovels, but at the same time we'll leverage. And then when we're kind of taking a pause from that, we'll go back to, okay, let's pay the smallest set first, which is what Dave Ramsey suggests. And then we'll just kind of re-leverage. And um, it's, it's about balance because not one person's way is always the correct way. It's about taking a mixture and doing what's best for you and your situation. And so far it's been working. Yeah, I would agree. Um, me and uh, Kirby have talked a lot about that kind of combining Robert Kiyosaki, Dave Ramsey, those kind of yes. myths. Robert Kiyosaki, another one, which I, I keep telling, I listen to something and I tell it to her. So it's like, she, even that right. is like a motivation, like two people who are motivated are listening to their, they're pumping themselves up. So they are constantly educating and different people. I listen to some people now she's reading a book mm -hmm. on what's her name? Kendra Scott. Kendra Scott, you know, the shark tank, one of the right. guests. Okay. Guest. Yeah. So okay. She's telling me about her. So while she's reading, you know, her, that financial goal. So with Robert Kiyosaki right. uh, and going back to your question, we choose to risk more right now i wouldn't suggest anyone well, to do what we are doing fully because we are risking a lot of things because we think we have known we got the secret on how to get out of debt so we are trying to leverage and we are younger so i told them we can risk a little more which i don't think dave ramsey can say it out on his program because that's if you're not an his... experienced risk taker then i'd say go for it but if you're not experienced and you don't have like it depends on the size of the shovel you have yeah it depends on like the risk versus how much capacity you have to make with the skill set that you have as well. Because we're both nurses. We could work anywhere. We could make as much money as we choose to make. Um, yeah, literally, we can work seven days a week. And yeah. like, literally, yeah. like our income can go about even uh, cardiothoracic surgeons. Like, um, if we work, because we work by the hour. And if there's a goes, California nurse who worked every day for a year and made like almost a million dollars. Yeah, in California, because the laws are different. But again, that's saying that our shovels are bigger so based on that we are like let's push harder in case i don't even want to say sh big shovels too because like someone could have a big shovel but be on salary and not have an opportunity to work overtime or um get a second job um it depends on how big your shovel is and your ability to make more with that shovel because some people are capped at a certain amount of hours as well and nurses really aren't yeah, I would agree completely. Kirby, uh, Kirby was texting me. You have something, Kirby? Yes. All right. So, FYI, on the Dave Ramsey plan, I was just laying. I hated every word of it because it just seemed like it was too daunting. So, so uh, I, too, followed the Dave Ramsey plan starting out. And uh, and I believe I heard you say you was about 18000 in debt. I was about 250000 in debt. Oh uh, Dave Ramsey plan... Uh, yeah, so Dave Ramsey plan, uh, I followed it religiously, religiously, and then I made it all the way from step one to step seven. Wow. And all the way to step seven, I, I uh, accumulated I accumulated the million dollars, but as you said, there's other methods out there. So I'm I'm reading the barbecue stocking books and stuff like that, learning about methods, OPM and stuff like that, and then I proceeded to double and triple my portfolio using another method with that. So, I mean, I like the fact that, you know, you, you reach out and you use somebody that, of course, you learned a method that was better than your current situation. And then you started going down that path. But then when you went down that path, you got more financially literate. I think that's the, the, uh, the word that she was trying to come up with when, when he was saying that if you have a big shovel, but you don't know what to do, it's, it's all about the financial literacy and understanding how finance works. The more you understand how finance works, then it's more you can understand how leverage, how return on investment, uh, and stuff like that, and how real estate, how the stock market, and just the things that will work out for you. So I love it. I love it because I was going through the same thing. Dave Ramsey, I was listening to him, and I was saying, if this guy don't work, I'm calling the customer out because <laughs> this stuff is too much to bear for one person. True. No. Yeah. So, wow, man, that's very impressive on your one to seven. I, yeah. I don't think we reached seven yet. I think we paused. I told you at five, and we're like, we are doing our own thing now. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we made it to five, and we realized we're like, okay, we're young right now. We had just bought our first house. We're like, 
we're not going to pay off that house. Let's buy it. Like, instead of like putting this cash to the first house, let's go buy a second house and make it pay for itself. Because theoretically, if you have a bunch of houses that are paying for themselves in 15 to 30 years down the line, you're not, you, you don't only own those houses. Those are um, providing you full income. No, but yeah, you're right. It's literacy of it fi is. financial literacy. Like I, I grew up in India, so I'm an immigrant to the United States eight years and I've not known all these things other than YouTube, like YouTube and Lynn yeah. listening to me, me through YouTube and the free content or, you know, just made me like, wow, I didn't learn this in school. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know where to invest my money. What's, what's, what's a rental property or what's a house? How do I, what's a mutual funds account? We don't, I had no clue. We had no, what's like other than YouTube in school, she didn't learn anything. I didn't learn nothing. None of these. I learned what not. <laughs> I learned how to spend money though. <laughs> yeah. No, those are, I, I love those points. I'm sure Kirby's over there loving what Lynn was just saying, because he, he teaches the same thing, you know, using uh, your investments to pay for your lifestyle, basically, or, you know, instead of paying off your house early, investing in a property or multiple properties and using the cash flow to pay off, you know, the house that you're living in, just using your, the income that you're producing from your investments or your assets to essentially pay for everything that you have. Another thing I realized is like the concept of 401ks, as much as people will hate me for saying this, um, people who had like 100,000 in their 401ks 10 years ago, that's that, that, or 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, that could have got them by in retirement. But now people who are saying, oh, I'll have a million in my 401k by the time I'm retired, maybe it could get you by now for 10 years or so if you live off of 100,000, but it can't get you by like in like, five, 10 years from now, a million is going to be the new hundred thousand. So real estate appreciates in value when the 401ks, it just kind of seems to be level in my opinion. So that's why we're like, not so focused on 401ks either. I'd rather put it into real estate because, because they appreciate in value. And by the time you're retired, it's not just, oh, I'll sell the house and live off of the money. It's I'm going to rent it out and make money off of like 10 rentals and I'm retired. Exactly. That's our opinion. I know people can argue on this. Some people will argue. Yeah, no, for sure. Everyone has different ideas. Um, I love the 401k method. Hey, uh, hey. Yeah, go I ahead. Yeah, I, Lynn, I'm agreeing with you a lot. Now I see why you're the smart one. <laughs> but um, the 401k, the 401k, we actually did a video about that. A million dollars is not enough to retire on. So I just wanted to say kudos to you for recognizing that as a, at a young age and pivoting and moving to something because bills come every month and if you have something that produces cash flow to cover your bills every month you'll be well off knowing well off and just having a million dollars and you were hoping to pinch off this for the next 10 20 30 years to get you going to buy. so just kudos to y'all for that that's all i have sorry y'all yeah, that's a smart decision by Lynn because I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. Let me see. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense on, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want to put like some in your 401k, it's, it's, a, it's, it's good, be, but it shouldn't be the only thing you depend on either. For, the, for, for people who are wanting to go max, I'm not saying for everybody, but the normal person, I agree. Don't tease them too much because it's or, or what do you call it? Too much information. So let them do the 401k, like, but for us specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For, I mean, in like, in my case, I would say like my goal with the 401k, um, I, I love taking advantage of like the, uh, how you can deduct uh, what you've contributed to your 401k from your income taxes. Yeah. Uh, and then sure. my idea or my focus on the 401k is just kind of like, by the time it can be withdrawn for both my wife and I, we, I would like to just put it into real estate. So I can see your point. Real estate would be the most important because essentially, yeah, you can't really live off of the lump sum of a 401k. Even if you hit a million, um, you would have to have millions, you know, tens of millions in there before you could actually just survive off of it. Because the reality is real estate will provide you cash flow, which you need. You need income. And a 401k, unless you have it invested heavily into dividends or dividend stocks, uh, you're not going to really be receiving any kind of cash flow uh, from your 401k account. Um, but my second question would be to you guys is what struggles, uh, if any, have you guys faced that have ultimately led to you guys being successful today? So any kind of like uh, hardships you faced or 
I know you mentioned you had debt and stuff like that. Is there anything else that you've struggled with or any kind of anything that's set you guys back or? Um, I would say some of the cultural differences um, in the beginning of our marriage, it was a little hard. Um, Stan coming from India and me being from here, uh, we just had some different expectations living together and when it comes to family. Um, so like when we were in so much debt, one of my problems was, and I, I, I eventually like got the concept, but like helping out family and that's on both ends, me and Stan Stan's like, Lynn, we need to help both of our families right now. It's COVID. Um, COVID's not impacting us because like we're healthcare workers, but it's impacting both of our families right now. We need to help them. And I'm kind of arguing with him, even about my own family. I'm like, Stan, no, we're in so much debt. Why, why are we helping our families when we're in debt ourselves? And he's like, it doesn't matter. Um, we have to help our families. And I don't just mean mine. And I'm like, so even like, he told me offer my parents help. And like, I think I had about a heart attack. I'm like, that's going to slow us down. And he's like, he's like, we'll figure it out. But like, I think one of the best things um, that got us to where we are today is after I like offered help to my family or we started helping other people, even though we were in debt and it might have slowed down our process, that act of helping felt good. Once I overcame that cultural um, barrier and actually like watched the impact of our help, even though we were in debt ourselves, I think that was part of like, oh my gosh, I got to make more money so I can help more people. And that was really when my mindset um, I so resisted the idea of travel nursing. We were just six months married, um, just moved into this one bedroom apartment. I was kind of emotionally attached to, <laughs> and I remember we were arguing for months over travel nursing. And I'm like, no, no, are you crazy? We we're just, uh, we're just newly married. We can't go like even six hours away. He's like, it'll be like three or four hours away. No, it was 36 hours away by the time I agreed to it. And I think I just realized that the ability the, to make more money um, and help more people, and that's even not just in a financial aspect, that's in a motivational and uh, mental health aspect as well, that I think really helping people um, overcoming the barrier of selfishness and take care of our needs 100% first, because if we're always doing that, it's never going to happen. If we say, oh, we'll only do this when we're at this point, it won't happen. We have to practice it continuously. And I think that's just like one of the biggest things I had to overcome cultural um, self selfishness in a way I was selfish. And even um, your history, like uh, with mental health. Yes. I also, I think one of the biggest things we both struggled with too is sometimes we had to accept now, like we had the concept of hanging out with people who are better than us. There's also times that we have to hang out with people who are negative, who are going to bring us down in a way, because we're the ones who are going to bring us up. Our whole point in this is we have to help people. And when you're helping people, sometimes you're not always helping the most positive people. They're, they're asking for help for a reason. And sometimes helping people like that, it can be emotionally draining, but we have to learn how to deal with that emotional drain because this is why we're doing this to help people in need. Yeah. And the struggles like would you face in your, in the past, like, you know, being diagnosed with anxiety and yeah. all. So she's been, she, she wrote it in her book on Amazon. Uh, she published her own book about her journey. Yeah. So that's some struggles, but she overcame and got more, like you got motivated to, yeah. to go more mm -hmm. saying, I, I got a, stamp on my forehead by the world and I'm going to prove them wrong. I was told uh, I'd never be a nurse, let alone get into a nursing program. Um, just kind of like I was this anxious person who was going to be on meds the whole life. And I think once I just overcame that barrier that no, I don't have to be on meds my whole life. Um, by the way, I've been like four years med free now from anxiety meds. Um, no, I I don't have to do this in order to accomplish this. And I think once I accomplish becoming a nurse, I'm like, whoa, okay, so let's show it more. So most people who prove the world wrong, they're satisfied, like, haha, in your face, I did this. For me, I'm like, no, I gotta go further. I get my master's degree. Um, I gotta get my doctorate degree. I gotta um, invest in even more so I can help people even more and just give them um, a bigger drive, a uh, this desire to do something similar to me. And I think one of Stan's struggles was um, 
throughout school, like just like being held back and stuff like that too. Yeah, I right? failed classes, then I came to America. I didn't grow up with finances. So, so those, those struggles, nursing. yeah, I got like, it is a struggle to become a nurse, like failing and failing. So those are the struggles that we face to, you know, now I'm like, we got one. I'm like, okay, now we can get, we can hit a couple more. Mm -hmm. So those are some struggles, which going back to your question. No, those, I, I love hearing all that. Um, Kirk, as Kirby said, uh, he's in a interracial marriage as well. I am too. My wife's from Venezuela. Um, Man, look at us, the trio. Yeah, so, uh, uh, three of us. <laughs> uh, so I, I mean, I can relate to the, the whole family aspect too. Um, it was, and I mean, I grew up in a family. Uh, I, I mean, I'm American. Uh, I mean, I grew up more so with my mother's family who are, um, they're Puerto Rican, uh, but I grew up American. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the culture from my family is very much so like you help your family as well. But I don't know if it happened to you guys, but sometimes, um, you know, family, you know, it's as unfortunate as it is, they, there's some members that might try to, you know, take advantage of your help. And yeah. so I saw maybe more of that from my family than from my wife's family. My wife's family, we actually help quite a bit, but to see where they actually struggle to uh, survive basically because of where they live and how literally, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars could go so such a long way for them. Um, it's, it's nice to see that help where it's, um, I mean, a huge kudos to you, like Kirby said, for being, being able to actually help your your family here as well i think that would have been um i think i may be selfish for not doing so much of that for for my family because um just seeing how 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 difficult i guess it could be for for a marriage to try and help everybody um but um no that's huge props to you for being in debt and actually helping both families that that's that's awesome to hear kirby did, do you have anything on that I want to keep you in here in the loop. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still listening in. I'm still listening in. Uh, yeah, and Alex, I think you hit most of the key points there. And uh, I'll go to a phrase. And me, I've, when I was younger, I helped family a lot. And then as I got older, like Alex said, I seen more, more of it going from help to expectation. I think that's the right word. And I'm okay with helping, but I should be expected. And, exactly. and again, it's, and we all from a diverse group, of, group here. So it's just the lifestyle and the, you know, the family upbringing and things like that, of how, how the family dynamics work. But Alex, I think you hit all, all the key points that I was going to say. So thank you for telling my question. <laughs> well, my third question, guys, <laughs> I'm sorry, Lynn, did you have something to say? I didn't know if you want to. Oh, I was just going to add on to Kirby's um, yeah, yeah, comment. I think that was kind of cool. Like, it's a good point saying, like, I should um, help, but like not being expected. Exactly. And it, like, in a sense, like certain, like his side, so in a way, like it was expected. My side, it wasn't expected at all. Um, They actually like helped me throughout school. And I think the fact that when COVID hit and I, um, I think one of the things that helped us was when like, it was an expectation to help his side and he's telling me, we got to help your side too. And I'm like, are you crazy? They don't need help. They don't even expect it. I think that's one of the things that helped me get over that is that my family didn't expect it. And I did anyways, and it felt good. And then it made me feel, it just kind of changed my perspective on helping his side. Right. I mean, so yeah, I, I and I would say, I mean, at least for my wife's family, it was kind of the same thing. Um, I maybe it's just the the culture, but um, it's kind of expected from the you know if if their children go to come to America and they're working and making um, more money than you could over there um, to kind of help those families. And um, I have to say, I mean, we still help her family, and it, it's not as much of a financial burden though. Um, Cause the expenses are just, the expense ratio is so different. Like, I mean, in Colombia, so she's from Venezuela, but she has family that live in Colombia. And I mean, over there, and I, I made a couple of videos on this, but you can live in Colombia off of like $400 a month, wow. like, like middle-class. And 
So to, to send them like a hundred and $200, like every month or so, just like mm -hmm. it goes such a long way. And it, it is, like you said, nice to see it help them as much as it does. And another thing I try to do at times is like, um, kind of like <laughs> it might sound just bad, but like, instead of just handing out money, like to her family, sometimes I try to give them like an opportunity, like, Hey, can you advertise this on my page? And like, or, Hey, I know someone who's looking for uh, advertising on their business. Can you help them out with their account and they'll design their account or whatever. And like, they'll get paid for that. But like in American dollars, which goes so, such a long, like a long way around so kind of like giving them off like offers are like, Hey, can you find me inventory so I can mm -hmm. sell it over here and they'll find something and I'll pay them. And like, it'll, it kind of just helps them going like kind of like a job or something like that. Um, I've I noticed that I could. Like you're not just money. handing out just cash here. Go, go. Right, ahead. kind of like. Oh, yeah, I want to give money. Together. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but it also makes them feel like purposeful too. Right. Of course. Of course. And I mean, because honestly, they even though they come from a third world country, you can you can tell that they do have some kind of sense of like embarrassment to ask for money. It, it's in it's in all cultures, really. Yeah. Uh, but the third question I would have is. Uh, what are okay so we made a me and Kirby made a video on this I don't know if you guys saw it, it was a recent video but um it was basically I don't even know if it's posted yet but anyway it, the the topic was people always ask us like how do you guys enjoy your money like you guys are just hermits so our question to you would be just that how do you guys enjoy your money our response was we like seeing it grow we like knowing that we can do whatever we want we like knowing that uh, we have a sense of security we're taken care of you know our assets are producing more that's how we enjoy it i don't know if it's the same for everyone who's financially successful so how do you guys enjoy your money we uh mostly it's like i was telling lynn it's like monopoly like a game because <laughs> okay no, it's like <laughs> we're all on the same page okay <laughs> it's like okay i like winning at the same time because people sometimes uh, you know, they don't want to say this. You like winning. Okay, it's good. You just like to make more money. Do we eat the best chicken in the world? No. We go to the same store, buy the same stuff. Because I tell Lynn, I don't have time to eat. Like, we don't have time to sitting and enjoying slowly eating the best chicken. Once in a while, I tell Lynn, I, I think eating is a waste of time. <laughs> it's a task. I'm like, I don't want to feel hungry. I, I wish I could spend more time with my kids, my family, enjoy and be happy. Right. But we eat the basic. We cook at home. We try eating healthy. If we go out and we are going out, we spend a good money, good, good quality amount instead of eating every like yeah. constantly outside, we'll go on a one nice meal or a trip right. with our family. And at the same time, mm -hmm. we, we enjoy just looking, watching our income grow, like having to, like, right. you know, two houses, we have an RV, uh, we lived in the RV too. So it's enjoying is very much a mindset. Um, so like the way I'm in, so, so other travel nurses are like, oh, I'm enjoying my money by going to Ireland or the Bahamas or Mexico or like just all this travel. And for me, my mindset is because sometimes I'll catch myself in that. Oh, I want to be traveling this that I'm like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm uh, spending my money on Monopoly and um, we're playing a real life game of Monopoly. And that makes me feel so much more enthusiastic about it. Also, we do spend the majority of our time on the West Coast. So there's a lot of like hiking. Um, yeah, for sure. That's, we'll go hike and then we'll come home and cook. And that to me is better than going out. Yeah. Yeah. No. Spending money. The thing is like Illinois and Midwest, like like the boring states, there's nothing to do that. Mm -hmm. other, you have to spend money to do something. Right. Like if you go out, you're like, what's the fee to enter this area? I'm like, is there something we can do? Enjoy nature, go and fishing, having, you know, a small boat. You don't need an expensive boat, a cheap boat, go fishing, just in nature, go Not swimming. In the Not in the here. You cannot see <laughs> there. We go just hike and, you know, we, we don't blow our money on anything crazy other than gas to drive. What brings me to this is like, even though we are in the Midwest, we are enjoying our money a little bit differently now. We did come here because um, we had to attend to this real estate property that we have right now. So I think, yeah, we are spending a little more going out and enjoying. Because we miss uh, Illinois food, Chicago food. 
Because the, in, okay. in the West Coast, the food is horrible. Not it's, just in the Southern. <laughs> it's ninety nine percent Caucasian, so I'm like, okay, I need some, I, I need some cultural food. Yeah. Like these guys yeah. don't know to cook anything. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's it, it it's definitely situational. Majority of it is like you guys said, enjoying seeing, watching your money grow. Um, for us, we love watching our money grow. And we love hiking, but we can't hike here. So we do somehow find a way to go out to eat, whether it's a business meeting and it becomes like a write-off because we're making um, plans with our businesses, with Unshackled, with our real estate. We're talking about that while we're out to eat. Um, so in a way, it is still pouring into making the money grow. Yeah. But, what um, do we spend? We are like, we like, you know, we'll try to get the benefit of being a business owner having an llc have being in real estate or right. you know yeah right exactly kirby you had something yeah i had some i'm over here laughing oh man classic because i agree a lot on a lot of the points that they're saying um the, the main ones me i'm like the master of business because i like to go out and eat i'm in florida so I like to go out and eat. But I was born and raised in the Midwest. I was from Detroit, Michigan. So I understand exactly what you mean uh, by that. But yeah, but the, the good part about it, and I just wanted to call this out to reiterate it to just continue to give you motivation is you're, you both came from backgrounds that wasn't financially secure. And then now you're learning the financial literacy. You're actually putting this to action. It's okay to read a book, but if you're not putting it to action, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, we had a video about that one also. But but you're actually putting it to work. So what you're doing now will actually change the legacy of your family moving forward. Your kids seeing you put the put this stuff into action. So they will regurgitate and start repeating the same steps that you do. So I just want to say kudos to y'all. Good job and I love the story. I love the story. Thank you. Thank you. You have in our shirts which we bought. Like people are like, oh, let's buy sweatshirts. We have it oh, on. Very cool. Tackle. Kirby, yeah. we gotta do that. <laughs> we got, I don't know why we don't have merch yet. It's yeah, not, and it's not to like sell or make money. It's just like you know what? Merch. If you wanna if you wanna buy <laughs> yeah. sweatshirts, why not have our brand? And why do we pay taxes? And we can. They ask some people ask me what's this thing, and we tell about our there YouTube. You and so yeah, <laughs> like a good idea. I think we should do that, Kirby. Um, <laughs> my my fourth question to you guys. I like it. What advice would you give to others who are parents and may think that becoming financially successful is not possible when you have kids? It's your mindset. It's <laughs> if you say that it's not going to happen. You're right. If you say it's not possible, you're not, it's not going to work because I know people who have five, six, seven kids and they are gr like hustling and making it work. Mm -hmm. And when we didn't have kids, I think we hustle less <laughs> yeah. and now when you have kids we are grinding every mm -hmm, minute mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. i'm on the like literally i sometimes feel i need to pause this yeah. is too much for me because mm -hmm. i slept for four hours woke up i'm spending time tomorrow is a party i'm booked every minute <laughs> but we are grinding so hard passively we have so much stuff going on, on the side yeah. that we are like okay we're doing it so it's a mindset the moment you change your mindset and say mm -hmm. it is possible and you're going to risk it and do it once and accomplish one goal second third fourth 100 goals will hit and you're like wait this is possible <laughs> my yeah my biggest advice going off of what stan says it's the mindset stan taught me this mindset called find a way um and that mindset with all those kids you have to find a way um that's whether you're doing research or just critically thinking okay i need this this and this to be financially stable how could i do it with kids for example stan and i he's like i, I wanted to really work but i had kids and i'm like oh well child care is just so expensive. It sounds like Lynn, you want to work, but do you have to make money? I said, no. He's like, so who cares if child care is expensive, find a babysitter and you're maybe only making like, you're making less than like what a normal nurse would make, but at least you're working. And like, it's basically like pay the babysitter to be able to work because you're making money anyways. It's, or like, if you guys want to like, some parents are like, oh, I can't pick up overtime because I can't pay the babysitter. Well, isn't the overtime you're making more than what you're paying the babysitter and you're still ending up with more cash? It's critically thinking, like find a way in that sense. And I'm not being greedy, you know? So my thing yeah. is, if you make money, give it like big right. quality. Like the more you give in the world for help or someone right. to help you out, right. you're going to your mindset when you start giving more or helping others right. is going to you're going to make 
bigger return. So right. like we were like, no, we will get a babysitter. We'll pay them pay, well. Pay them well at the same time. And that just made us make and more if money. They're working overtime because we're trying to work overtime, like give them overtime hours yeah, set, a, set a higher rate for them working more than 40 hours a week and i think that is ultimately like um that is, you're just gonna find a way with with kids find a way um for us even it doesn't even have to be financially but like most people they say oh i can't travel with kids i mean stan and i just traveled like from oregon to chicago basically across the whole country with two kids under one two babies you have one we have a newborn He's now nine weeks, but we came and he was four weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks, yeah. And we lived in an RV. Like people are like, oh, it's impossible to live with two kids in an RV. I said, we live comfortably and we enjoy and we miss it. Yeah. And my thing is, it's your mindset. If you say, whatever you say is going to mm-hmm. happen. Like we have a whiteboard, we write the impossible. And we say, look at it like Steve Harvey keeps right. saying, you know, write the goals and keep looking at it every day. Your mind right. will start sparking ideas to make that work. That's uh-huh. a big secret I learned. I'm like, my, our minds are so powerful. If you write something down, your mind will start sparking to get that mm-hmm. to happen, even though it's impossible. So I love what you're saying. And I know it's music to Kirby's ears right now. He's probably loving what you're saying. Um, and to your point with, uh, I guess, like, it must be a Midwest thing because the reason I asked that question is because at least in Florida, the majority of parents that I've encountered just like give up when they have kids. There's no real mo- Kirby's actually texting me now. <laughs> he said, I love it. Okay. So um, there's no motivation. It seems for many parents that I've encountered down here. Once, once they have kids, they kind of just give up. So it's really great to see that you guys use that as a motivation uh, to work harder. Um, I know my mom was that way. She didn't, really figure out the, you know, financial literacy part, but she did work really hard. And it, it's, it's great to see parents actually do that. Kirby, I know you probably want to jump in on this, so I'll leave it open for you. Uh, it's a lot that I want to say, but I'll wait till we do another, another interview with you guys. And, and yeah, I love everything I hear, but yeah. so, but yeah, we'll dive into another one, but I want to interrupt it because I know the audio is better on your side. Uh, you're doing a great job. All right. Um, my next question, guys, and I'm sorry if it's too many. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I don't know if you have somewhere to be. We can be like seven, seven, eight minutes more. Yeah. Oh, okay. then we have two ticking time bombs over here. If they so start going far, off, they so far they're good. We're keeping an eye on both of them, but so far they're good. So I'm like, both are quiet. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's that's really weird. They're quiet. Yeah, I'm surprised. Okay. I'll leave it with this question. This last oh, one. No worries. Yeah. What advice would you give your your younger self? with what you know now, if you had the chance? For me personally, I would tell my younger self, just calm down, it'll all work out. If you gotta just work hard and stop being so um, type A. Um, I'm a type A person and I have struggled with, if one thing doesn't like line up, I'm just like, ah, forget it. And I think, um, or I give up or I start overthinking and then it holds me back. One of my biggest things is, um, don't be so stuck on a plan to my younger self. Don't be so, um, harsh on yourself. Don't be so the things have to go a certain way because the second I learned that to be a little bit more laid back and go with the flow, I was able to function a lot better and think a lot more and be way more creative. So very cool. No, I would, yeah, I would say the same thing too. Like, like, so people like, you know, like I, I, my dad gave me the good advice of, you know, I'd learn how to fail. <laughs> like parents teach, you know, don't worry, honey, you'll be fine. He will protect you. We'll help you. And I'm like, okay. But like my dad told me, you better learn how to fail because life is going to make you fail and you're going to get hurt and cry. And you don't want to break down at that point. And I, I, I took it like, no, I don't want to fail, but I see that advice on how uh, my dad told me it's okay to fail, learn to fail, because the more you fail, you're just going to get stronger. You're, then nothing can touch you. Once you're not scared of like being broke or being in debt or, you know, what am I going to lose? So guess what? Let's go for it. So, mm-hmm. and yeah, I would just tell myself, repeat, and it's okay to fail and learn to fail. <laughs> I love those points. Those are great. I'll end it there. Kirby, is there anything you want to add to it? 
No, Our goal should be to interview you guys. Yeah, after, I know. So we do our research because we need to set questions and yeah. yeah, we would love to do that. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, check out their channel for sure. And we'll see you guys in the next video as always.